Peace. This is the enemy's public. And I am Brother Nasir. Brothers and sisters, can you imagine a people or a person who is no good at all, have absolutely no good in them at all? They always manage to make the attempt when you think that they have stooped to their lowest. They always surprise us and do something even more despicable than the things that they have done previously. Now, we have a reporter named Sarah Painter. I believe she worked for the New York Post. During our brother's mishap before he transitioned into the ancestral realm, speaking about our brother, the iconic hip hop artist, the real MC, the one who a lot of our brothers and sisters gravitated towards DMX. Before our brother transitioned into the ancestral realm, this cave beast had the nerve to post a article about the homes that DMX owned and lost. Now, where is the relevance to that and our brother transition passing away? We lost our brother and she had the nerve to be disrespectful. Caucasian people are so disrespectful. Now, on the flip side, on that same day, a so-called prince out of Europe passed away. And they expect us to mourn him. You have one who's an iconic hip hop artist who, according to himself, had his own demons, but I'm not going to demonize the brother. No, I'm not getting into that. I'm going to remember him and respect him for what he gave us and uh, his artistry and his passion and his realness. What you see is what you get when it came to DMX. Yet, this prince who passed away the same day, they expect us to honor him. I had a back and forth with somebody in a comment session and he asked me, why did I disrespect a war veteran? As if being a war veteran, a tool for white supremacy is something that I'm supposed to pay homage to. Now, I told him that to say that, to um, a black man is disrespectful. And um, Prince Philip they said fought for the freedom of Europe. You know, he died. He was 99 years old. And again, they said he fought for the freedom of Europe. To tell a black man that someone fought for the freedom 
of anything while our people are still suffering to this day. And some of these Caucasian people, most of them actually, just don't get it or not trying to get it. I'm not one of those Negroes who even see any of them as royalty. I don't. When I see one of them, I see them as taking our place as royalty. And the things that they've done to receive their royalty. Now, these articles in these newspapers disrespect DMX, but they pay homage to this so-called war veteran. I call him a war mongering, a robot who fought to obtain and sustain racism and white supremacy all over the world. I'm going to go and I'm going to touch different subjects this evening. Yet this is my first subject, how they disrespect our brother and want us at the same time as disrespecting our brother, they want us to pay homage to this warmonger so-called Prince Philip. They said he was Queen Elizabeth's longtime consort. They said he would be laid to rest in a low-key ceremony. And I don't understand the hype. They're a world away from us in my witch. And as black people, they should be a world away in our thoughts. We shouldn't give a damn about that. In all actuality, we shouldn't give a damn. And disrespect to our brother is not going to be tolerated. None of us should tolerate disrespect to any of us. And to those who are out there make a mockery of this brother's name because the brother has children. He has people who love him. You know who I'm talking to. You should not be making mockery of this brother. You should not re be repeating a narrative by a wicked media source. You're going to take it as fact because of the brother's past because he did drugs before. This is something that our brother admitted. Why can't some of us admit, uh, admit our faults? Hiding your hand and throwing stones. That's all you see on YouTube. Negroes hiding their hands and throwing stones as if any of us, just know that I'm including, my, including myself, as if any of us have a righteous bone in our damn body. Yet, you have Negroes who want to be seen as righteous, yet they're not doing anything righteous and a damn sure not saying anything righteous. Yet, they'll make mockery of their own brother. I don't care if the brother did overdose. I'm not going to make mockery of his name because that's not what we're supposed to do as brother. And some Negroes going to do it in the name of keeping it real. You're keeping it real dumb. 
real dumb. What about paying homage? What about having sympathy for the family and all of those who care about this brother? Now, I understand this weekend there was supposed to be massive white lives matter um whether you're gonna call it a protest convention or marches all over the United States that's another form of wickedness because black people are trying to get white people to realize that our lives matter to offset what we're doing. They'll say white lives matter. White lives matter. If you look at the history of the United States of America and the whole entire world, you would see that white lives matter. You would come to the conclusion that white lives matter. Now, we say black lives matter because of the way that we are treated all over the world. That's why we say black lives matter in a nudging way because if you look at how we're treated it's as if black lives do not matter and you know I'm not going to dwell on that but the way we treat each other we need to treat each other better but that's no excuse for other people to treat us bad of course, that's something that we have to deal with on our own. Because whenever we say Black Lives Matter, I'm not with the um, organization. I'm with the sentiment. Black Lives do matter to me. But the organization, they can keep that because it's a bit divisive when it comes to us as a whole, as people. So I'm not dealing with nothing feminist. I'm not dealing with that. I'm dealing with something that if it's not tangible for the whole of us, I don't want no part of it. All of us is, are supposed to come up together. We, we're supposed to fight together. We're supposed to die together and come up together. If it's not unity in that fashion, I want no part of it. Now, White lives matter in opposed to black lives matter is evil and wickedness. And look at how these people behave when they come together. You can tell by the way they act when they come together. Who are the agent provocateurs when they come and disrupt our peaceful protest? You can tell. And white people are totally lawless. There's some lawless people. They always want to throw the law up in our face, but they are so lawless. And the police are lawless also. And you can see by the way they reacted at the Capitol building that they have some restraint. Because look at the restraint they exercise during that insurrection on January 6, 2020. They show incredible restraint during that insurrection. It was total lawlessness. People were climbing walls, breaking windows, taking down American flags, putting up Donald Trump flags, spraying officers with bare mace, assaulting officers, an officer from my area who worked out there was murdered by one of them. People from my area, from the city that I live in, were out there during that insurrection. 
partaking in the lawlessness. Yet they always want to throw the law up in our face and police are constantly pulling us over, violating our rights. When we're the main people who obey and adhere to the law. We're the main people that adhere to the law. We don't break the law like others do. Now, a young brother, 21-year-old Noah Green, they said that he drove through a barricade, hitting and killing a police officer. And when he exited the vehicle, he had a knife and he lunged at a officer and he was shot and killed by Capitol Police officers. Of course, when it comes to police and when it comes to the media's word, I am a skeptic because they never tell the truth when it comes to us. They never tell the truth, period. Now, as bad as that is, they try to tie this brother to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam, saying that he was a member. And this came from the media that, you know, they went in to his um, Facebook, his social media, and they, I'm sure these people have IP guys and IT guys to go and finagle their, his own social media to put in what they wanted to put in. And not only that, the young brother said that he had some break-ins. He had break-ins. So there's no telling what they were doing to this young brother. Now, they said that he was a member of the nation, which was not true, because the Nation of Islam, again, as I said in my other video, the Nation of Islam don't wear braids. They're clean cut. Clean cut. You have to be groomed. Hair has to be cut. S smooth face. You have to be clean cut. And he, you know, he was a not necessarily sympathizer, but he was an admirer of the Nation of Islam. Anybody in their right mind would be. So there's um nothing wrong with that. But if you look at some of the different mass shootings that um devout Christians have um, committed. You don't see anyone tying these shootings to the church that these mass murderers attend. So you can't tie what someone else do to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Not only that, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has said publicly that he would never send the young people to the slaughter because he knows, he has said this repeatedly, that no one has weapons like the United States of America. The United States of America spend more money on defense than they spend on anything, even educating the children. So no one has weapons or military might like the United States. And for them to tie our, our young brother, I'm gonna call him brother because that's who he is, Noah Green, to 
the nation of Islam because he donated to the nation. He says that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is exactly who he is to all of us, leader, teacher, and guide. But the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan will tell us emphatically, we don't carry weapons. We are never the aggressor in a situation. He teaches us to never be the aggressor. Fight with those who fight against you. So he would never order a brother to go, go from Indiana to D.C. and drive through a barricade, hitting someone with a car. Now, the nation of, nation of Islam responded to these accusations. The nation of Islam, it says, has repudiated last week's attack on U.S. Capitol that left a police officer dead and another injured and distanced itself from the suspect. After some reports said that he was a follower of the religious movement led by the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. In a Tuesday, April 6th statement, the group said that Noah Green, the assailant who was killed in the attack, sought but did not complete membership in the Nation of Islam. The statement also expressed NOI sympathy with the victims, condolences to their families and prayers for the full recovery of the other officer who was injured. Mr. Noah Green alleged use of an automobile as a weapon and the alleged possession of a knife as reported violates our teachings. The statement read, we absolutely disavow this act that resulted in the senseless loss of life. It is shocking for us to learn that someone who was attempting to be a part of our ranks may have been involved in something as tragic as this. Now, Green was shot after he stepped out of his car, armed with a large knife and lunged towards the officer. According to the authorities, we have to say according to the, to the authorities, doesn't mean it's necessarily true. The second officer who was struck by Green's car has been since released from the hospital. Now, in disavowing Green's actions, the Nation of Islam described itself as having no history of violence against this government, which is the absolute truth. It added that it instructs its members to not carry weapons or have any, not as much as a pen knife. That's our teaching in their home. Now, this goes for those who are not in law enforcement because some of some brothers in the nation of Islam are in law enforcement. There's nothing wrong with having a job, but long as you believe and adhere to the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. I know brothers in their ranks who are cops. Yes, I do. But these brothers are soldiers in the nation of Islam. See, some of our people, they have this notion that just because a brother have a job, that means he will sell out the nation. Now, brothers are vetted. Brothers are vetted, you know. And we have, um, again, brothers in the ranks who are in law enforcement. That doesn't mean that they're a they're a uh, Wim O'Neill because they're in law enforcement. These brothers are in law enforcement out in the opening, not helping law enforcement set up the nation. There's a difference. Now, our brother Noah Green, he came to Savior's Day, okay, in Detroit, and uh, he made a donation to the Nation of Islam, the Savior's Day gift charity. 
is a lot of members of the Nation of Islam who donate to the charity day charity um gift, the Savior's Day charity gift, and there's a lot of brothers and sisters who are not members of the Nation of Islam who donates to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan because of the work that he's doing. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is not exclusive to um Muslims. Anyone who calls on the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan especially when he was a younger brother, he will avail himself to them and he'll go to them. So they need to cut that nonsense out about the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan sending a hitman in a rental car armed with a knife to do something crazy. That's not what the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan do. Now, just imagine a people who are no good at all. They come to your country, they set up army bases, they set up embassies, they bomb you to oblivion, they don't put back nothing that they use. Now take October 16, 1995, and put it along the side of January 6, 2020. And look at the difference. We probably had about 10 times as people if they had out there. Probably more than that because there wasn't that many people, but they did a lot of damage. We had a whole lot more of um, people at the Million Man March than they did at the insurrection. Yet, look at how they behaved when they went out there. When we left there, there was no trash on the ground, no damage done to the buildings, and we didn't commit no act of violence, not even to our open and consistent enemy. Why? Because the black man is not a savage. We went there for instruction, and we received instruction from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. This is the enemy's public, and I am Brother Nasir. Like, share, subscribe, leave a comment in the comment section. Peace.